Hello everyone, I hope you're doing good. Many of you were asking me to make a detailed video on the new EOI process of OINP. So here's that video where we'll talk in detail about the new process through which you can apply for the Ontario PNP. It's not applicable for all the streams, so which all streams is this new process applicable for? We'll discuss the points table. So for the first time now for Ontario PNP, we have its own points table. So we'll discuss that and we'll also discuss the process. So if you're interested, stay tuned. Hey guys, I'm Shitanshu from Dream Abroad and I regularly upload useful videos like these. So if you haven't subscribed this channel yet, please consider subscribing. Also, if you want to immigrate to Canada and if you have any queries, you can come over to Dream Abroad Canada Facebook group. And also, if you want to enjoy some fun moments, you can follow me at Instagram. My ID is Dreamers Abroad. Okay, so just to give you an overview of this new process, let's first find out which all categories is it actually applicable for. So overall for OINP, there are three different categories. A business category, employer job offer category and human capital category. Under business category, we have corporate and entrepreneur stream. Under employer job offer category, we have foreign worker, international student and in-demand skill stream. And under human capital category, we have master's graduate, PhD graduate, Ontario Express Entry French speaking skilled worker, Ontario Express Entry human capital priority stream and Ontario Express Entry skilled trades streams. Now, out of all of these different categories and streams, this new EOI process would be for five streams, which are foreign worker stream, international student stream, in-demand skill stream, master's graduate stream, and PhD graduate stream. Mind it, the most popular stream, Ontario Express Entry Human Capital Priority stream, will still follow the old process. There won't be an EOI process for it. At least until now, it hasn't been declared. Now, out of those five different streams, there are two streams for which this EOI process is already open. So you can go on to apply the EOI for those two streams. And those two streams are foreign worker stream and international student stream. And for the other three streams, the EOI process will open soon. And when it opens, I'll definitely create a video to let you know about it. Okay, now when you have the idea that this EOI process is for which stream? We can now discuss about the process. What does this actually mean? I've been talking about this for a couple of minutes now. EOI process, expression of interest process, but what does this actually mean? There's an online portal and you need to go on there and register an EOI, which means register your expression of interest that you're interested in applying the Canadian PR through OINP, that is Ontario PNP. There's no fee for it, so it's free of cost. You can create your profile free of cost. Now, please note, you can register an EOI for one or more streams, but you can only register one EOI per OINP stream. So that is an important point to note. Now, once you've registered for the EOI, you'd be awarded certain points based on the Ontario's points table. We'll discuss about the points table in the last part of the video so now someone might ask what's the criteria for getting an invitation so what's mentioned in the oinp website is that from time to time the oinp will rank candidates in one or more of the oinp stream selection pools either on a general basis that is they'll rank all candidates who registered an expression of interest or on a targeted basis that is they'll rank only those candidates who have one or more targeted labor market or human capital attributes and invite the highest ranking candidates to apply. So there's no hard and fast rule as such. Based on what they've mentioned here, they would issue invitations. And if you've got the invitation through this process, then what will you do next? If you're invited to apply, your application must be submitted within 14 calendar days from the date you receive the invitation. At this point, now you have to pay the fee. Now, I don't want to comment on the processing times because processing times have been over the charts during COVID times. So, so I don't want to comment on it at the moment. I'll provide a link to the Ontario's e-filing portal through which you can register the EOI. I'll provide that link in the description box below. If you're interested, you can check that out. Now, of course, you'll be curious to know about the points table. How will you be able to score points? 
on what factors. Before I tell you that, let me tell you some of the jobs, real jobs that you can apply if you are in Canada. These are real job openings and you can apply from the comfort of your home. Now here I want to thank T-Tech Jobs for reaching out to me so that I can spread the word across the Dream Abroad family. So we've got two job opportunities here. Both of them are for the customer service representative. And the good thing is that both of the jobs are remote jobs. Let's just quickly go through the first job and check out the requirements. So if you're seeking the job, you should be in British Columbia, New Brunswick, Newfoundland, Labrador, Nova Scotia, PEI, Quebec. As an eligibility requirement, you should be fluent in English. However, the education requirement is very low. You can be a high school graduate or equivalent. You should have six months or more of customer service experience and a quiet room. You would need a high speed internet and most likely a computer as well. I assume in this world of pandemic, we all have computers, headsets, mobile phones and most of us would fulfill these basic requirements. The second job is for the bilingual customer service representative for Portuguese and English and for the same provinces as well. Now the good thing with these jobs is that you'll get a base salary of up to 17.5 which is a few dollars above the minimum wage level and a permanent full-time position. If you want to apply for this job you should have exceptional communication skills in Portuguese and English excellent computer skills and of course the eligibility to work in Canada among other requirements that are mentioned here. I'll provide the link to both of these jobs in the description box below. If you're interested you can definitely go on to apply for these jobs and of course you can work as the customer service representative with the comfort of your home. Okay guys now we can discuss about the points table something which is very important. Okay so to know that I've taken you to the official website of Government of Ontario, Ontario.ca here you'll see the scoring factors. So it depends on various factors such as your job offer. So if you have a job offer of skill level A you'll get 10 points, B you'll get 8 points, you won't get any points for skill level C or D. Mind it this is applicable to certain streams but it is not applicable to some streams like masters graduates or PhD graduates. Similarly, your wage matters here. This is something quite new. So if you're earning $40 per hour or more, then you'd get 10 points. But if you are earning less than $20 per hour, you won't get any points for this. The Canadian work experience also matters here. So if your cumulative work experience is 12 months or more, you'll get 4 points. But anything less than that won't fetch you any points. Similarly, your Canadian work experience in different NOC skill level, if it's in the skill level A, you'll get 3 points, otherwise you won't get any point. Then your Canadian work experience earnings history. All these points are very new guys, you won't see such points in the express entry. They say that if you earn $40,000 or more in a year, you'll get 3 points, less than that you won't get any points. Now coming down to education, you'll get 10 points for PhDs, 8 points for masters and so on. Similarly for field of study, for engineering you'll get 10 points, for healthcare you'll get 10 points and similarly for other trades you'll get lesser points. Then it comes down to your Canadian education experience. So if you have more than one Canadian credential then you'll get 10 points, for one Canadian credential you'll get 5 points. Your language skills. Now if you have CLB 9 or higher you'll get 10 points and it will reduce as your score reduces. Mind it, some of these factors are not applicable to certain streams which are mentioned here. Then your knowledge of official languages, if you have both English and French, then you'll get more points. If you have only one language, then you'll get five points. Then if you reside outside of GTA, so this is something quite new, you'll get 10 points. If you reside inside GTA, you'll get six points, which clearly means that they want people to move out of GTA. Obviously GTA is getting very crowded and they want people to get to other remote locations of Ontario as well. Similarly your location of study also matters. If you studied from outside of GTA then you'll get 10 points but if you studied inside GTA then you'll get 6 points. GTA here means Greater Toronto Area. Then after that they do have this strategic priorities as well. But all in all, this is a quite different 
points table that you'll generally see for any PNP. Now here they haven't said at all that there is any cutoff score. They haven't said how frequent the draws would be conducted. They haven't said that how they will actually take out the creamy layer. But I'm pretty sure that the more points you score, the higher chances would be for getting an invitation from Ontario PNP. But yes, as and when we get more details about it, we'll let you know. Thanks a lot for watching this video. If you haven't subscribed the channel yet, please click the subscribe button. If you have any feedback, please put it down in the comment section below. And yes, do not forget to like this video and share it with your friends as well. Thanks again for watching this video.